Science, my lad, is made up of mistakes. But they are mistakes which it is useful to make. Because they lead little by little to the truth. Hi there. You're listening to a brand new episode of Folksy, the storytelling podcast with me, Izer. I know what you're thinking. Isn't the podcast on Saturdays? Well, isn't the world not supposed to go to hell in a handbasket? Me and the world, we're even. So, today's quote is from our author of the week, Jules Verne. Certainly someone you've heard of, if not outrightly devoured like I did when I was a kid. Well, more of a kid than I am right now, but I'm digressing. What you may not have known is the unfortunate circumstances surrounding these publications of Mr. Wern's. So, let's talk about it. Jules Wern comes up in any conversation about the origin of the sci-fi genre. While he was no slouch in the popularity department while he was alive, indeed, records make him out to be the French rock star of the era, in death and in translation, Mr. Wern has truly been immortalized. This immortality came with a price, however, and this price was one that any author worth their salt would be hesitant to pay. You see, while Mr. Wern, born 1828, had been writing for publication for a while when he reached his 18th birthday, damn, it wasn't until 1852 that his success started to permeate the non-French-speaking West enough for translation. And at this point, he was already basically the godlike figure that he's revered as for French literature, you know? So naturally, publishers were keen to get his work out as soon as humanly possible. Unfortunately, this was before the times of AI-assisted translation or even automated spell checkers. So naturally, publishers cut corners to get the books out into circulation faster. In fact, some modern scholars believe that this was a move specifically to push Wern's works onto a kid's reading audience in the West rather than an adult one. Apparently, the English-speaking public wasn't much inclined to the sciences and would not be as interested in accurate scientific descriptions and such. In the name of this pruning-based quote-unquote translation of theirs, publishers took away way too many liberties with the source material, to the point that they added and subtracted plot points at will, changed scientific figures, and even edited storylines outright. You know, as a kid, I remember reading a decent amount of Jules Verne and R.L. Stevenson, and while I loved the former subject matter, you know, around the world in 80 days, journey to the center of the earth, to the moon, on an asteroid, so much stuff. But it was still the latter's writing style, you know, Mr. Stevenson's writing style, which appealed to me much more. And now we know why. Because that wasn't actually Jules Verne. Let me tell you peeps, I have had an aversion to abridged versions for ages. And now I feel fully justified. So, what does this mean going forward? Well, first of all, we definitely will not be reading Mr. Wern's delightful work here on the podcast, mainly because it won't be his work exactly. Also, if you're good at French to English translations, maybe try reading some of the original Jules Wern titles. They're freely available for download on gutenberg.org. Just Make sure not to read the English ones because, um, yeah. Also, since we're all stuck in this apocalypse anyway, maybe even try your hand at a bit of translation for the rest of us. I'd, I'd really love to read some one before I finish learning French, to be very honest with you. Anyway, that was it for today. The music today has been a selection from Lakey Inspired, back to basics as it were. See you here next time as we get back to reading stories. Stay safe. Eyes are out. <laughs>